Hello, this is a, another episode of Madeira Newsmakers, a production of the Madeira Tribune and Trib TV. Obviously, uh, water is uh, pertinent to everybody. There's nobody it doesn't touch in one way or another. So, uh, going to, to the council on this issue is germane to just about anybody. Um, the specific recommendation, uh, while it only touches those people in the city, really affects all of us because we all share the same water and the same water table locally. And we're asking that they amend our city ordinance that regulates water. Currently we're in a stage three water restriction which limits outdoor watering to two days a week. Um, the odd numbers and the even numbers having alternate days. That provision allows us to reduce the amount of consumption overall. People generally will not consume as much when they have less opportunities to water their lawn. It helps us to manage the limited resources we have. Normally that's done during the summertime when irrigation is at its highest. Uh, during a drought time though, uh, two things happen. One is irrigation periods extend. When you don't have late um, rains in the spring, people start irrigating earlier. And when you don't have early rains in the fall, they irrigate longer. We're just now starting to see the first of our, of our uh, rains and people are happy, but there's an awful lot of people still having their irrigation on. The bullet points uh, in, the, in the regulations now are stricter adherence to water use regulations. Mm -hmm. Outside watering limited to two days per week. Right. You can enforce that if you have enough people driving around or checking or checking the meters, I guess. Mm -hmm. Reading the uh, reading the meters. Mm -hmm. uh, water served to restaurant customers only upon request. I know that works because I, I never have a glass of water in a restaurant. <laughs> Not if they have beer. Huh? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or diet. Pepsi. Yeah. 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 Existing uh, commercial car washes required to install water recirculation equipment. Is that happening? Yeah, that's that's already was sort of on the books. Uh, there becomes a question, some people often wonder why that doesn't apply to things like uh, uh, your typical uh, car wash of your uh, local sports team or, or whatever. That's not a commercial car wash. And so sometimes those things become, people complain about a lot because they, they're tightening their belt and then they see somebody else using water and we understand that, but they're not a commercial venue so we can't regulate them. Discontinue irrigation of selected turf areas at parks and school sites. Mm -hmm. Now our red line gets a lot of calls from people who say the city is wasting water. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what, they they do, and, and I think it's appropriate for them to call us on that if we're doing that. Uh, one of the things that most people don't realize about that is that when you're talking about the city, well, sometimes they don't know the difference between the city and the county and the school, but that's okay. But we're all the the same municipal users. Is that there's a lot of stuff, and probably the most common thing people see and irks them and irks every one of us is if they see a sprinkler watering the roadway, you know, as they're driving to work, and they just got a fifty dollar ticket. So <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> and uh, they have to understand that the city does try to do that. We we actually contract for those services for those irrigation and landscaping services, but they're instructed to do those things. Um, and they're constantly being fixed. Um, we understand that things break and things need adjustment continually. I forget the number, the parks can give you the real number, but the number of, of uh, sprinkler heads and, and valves is staggering. It's in the neighborhood of several, I'm trying to say it's like around 5,000, um, but it's just that there's an awful lot of it. Um, but that's okay. Um, that's what we're, we're there for. Our, my staff is most hypersensitive when we waste water because nobody wants to be, we really don't want to get that call. So, you know, we pick up the call, phone and we're on the phone to Parks and they're on the phone to their contractor and we will usually go over if we can take care of it ourselves, you know. But uh, that's okay. People should be aware and they should hold us accountable. Installation of 
ultra low flow toilets, water efficient shower heads and faucets prior to the sale of any property. Mm -hmm. Now that means that if you if you have a if you're, you're living in a house and you don't have those things, your house isn't can't be sold until you do install those things. Yeah, that's the rule. The only problem is there's really no way to enforce it. It's one of those things we've seen and addressed. It is the standard, so we didn't want to change the standards. So it's sort of an honor system thing. When we uh, remodeled this building you know, four, four years ago, a little mm -hmm. over four years ago, one thing we found out that was we couldn't get a permit unless we installed uh, just a low flow toilet, water right. efficient shower heads, and and uh, yeah. faucets. Yeah, yeah. there are Although some. We don't have any shower. There are some some places where we do have opportunities when you need a permit. Uh, when the city does uh, a sale of a property through maybe one of their um, uh, financing programs through the, some of the housing grants, they'll uh, make sure we comply during those things. But most sales, no, we're we're not involved in those things. And requires hot water recirculation systems or on-demand hot water heaters in new construction. Tell us a little about that. Uh, well, I would probably defer to the uh, building official for that, but they, that was that'd be something in your plan check when you're getting a building that you can comply with. The third paragraph of your report is kind of scary. That there has been no significant reduction in drought conditions mm -hmm. since June, when the uh, when the stage three restrictions were first imposed. Due to the persisting drought conditions, the city has had one well fail completely, one has had to be refurbished, and three others have lost significant production capacity. Recent testing of our wells also indicates that there is a potential that other wells could soon have problems with pumps breaking suction and would require the bowls to be lowered. Currently, several county public systems are on stage 3 and stage 3B water restrictions. Tell us a little about what these problems uh, indicate. Is, is the city running out of water? Well, uh, we all have, are experiencing different types of behaviors than we're used to. There's, we're used to seeing seasonal fluctuations in water tables and we're used to seeing some small uh, creep or uh, overdraft occur, um, but we've seen some things that, that haven't behaved like we're used to seeing. Not knowing what was happening, we decided to hire people that did hopefully would know what was happening. We hired AECOM and Ken Schmidt, uh, well known for his expertise in the area, to uh, take a look at our particular information and all our well logs and our um, all the data that we have and, and everything that, that county had, the county had around and, and try to figure out what was happening with our aquifer specifically. Why certain wells were more stressed than others and, and uh, maybe we could sort of predict or adjust to what was going on. Uh, we're still not quite complete. There's still a little bit more, more work to be done, but some of the preliminary information told us um, that Basically, a lot besides just the fact that the water table is being lowered because there's a lot more straws in the in the in the aquifer, there's more people drawing it. Is it's not just water depth, but it's the rate at which water is traveling through that. Um, where normally you would have uh, maybe 20 feet of cover on a well and would still run fine and wouldn't draw down and break suction. We have wells that are drawing down 100 feet of cover and breaking suction because at the rate at which we pump, which will be in the rate, anywhere in range from maybe 800 gallons per minute to 2,000 gallons per minute, uh, it can't sustain that. You're, it's just the water isn't moving fast enough, so you get a cone of depression and then you start to get air into your water and then you can break suction. Um, and that's just sort of a, the fact that you've, there's not enough, if you would, uh, pressure in the groundwater because everyone's drawing on it. If you open all the faucets in your house, you don't get very good flow in the shower head, do you? No. <laughs> that's sort of what's happening. Uh -huh. And um, then there's some other more complex hydrological issues that I doubt if I could pronounce or explain. But um, none of them tell us that, that we're going to have any relief quickly.